This week we'll talk about retouching skin in Photoshop. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, I'm Mark Wallace. Well this week I want to dive right in. A lot of people have been asking me if I could do a tutorial about how to retouch portraits, specifically how to retouch skin in their portraits, and so that's what we're going to do this week. Now I'm assuming that you know a few things about Photoshop, specifically uh, that you know about layers and masks and how to change brush sizes and select your brushes and then use filters. Now, if all those things or some of those things are new to you, make sure you zip over to the Adorama Learning Center. There's a ton of stuff about Photoshop there. You can see all kinds of video tutorials and articles that will help you out. So I'm going to assume that you know a few of those things because if I taught all that, this tutorial would take us hours and we don't have that much time. Now also, as I'm doing this tutorial, uh, I'm going to be using a Wacom tablet. Now a tablet like this, it will save you hours in retouching. You'll see that I go through and really quickly start selecting and retouching areas of a portrait and the way I'm doing that is using my Wacom tablet to quickly select and choose things. So without a tablet, what I show you today could easily take two or three or four times as long and so if you're new to retouching and you think I'm going insanely fast, the reason I'm going that fast is because I have a Wacom tablet and that allows me to do things that you just can't do with the mouse. So I really highly recommend that. So without further ado, let's hop into Photoshop and start retouching. Let's take a closer look at the image that I'll be retouching and some of the issues that we have with the skin. And also I'm going to show you the end result and then we'll work backwards. And so uh, I have here a photo of Carissa that I made in the studio a few weeks ago. And I'm gonna zoom right in here to the actual pixel. So we're gonna zoom right in as close as we can get. And we can see a few things. Now Carissa's got great skin. We do have a few issues here that we will be dealing with. And there are the issues right here on the cheek. We've got an issue right here where this is sort of in a shadow area on her cheekbone. And then on the other side of her face, we have a different area right here where we've got a blemish that we want to be uh, fixing up. We'll be using different techniques to do this. Well, let me show you uh, two different ways that we can do this. There are two different types of end results. One I like and I use quite a bit. The other I don't like, but a lot of people do it. And so I will show you how to do that as well. So uh, first, let's talk about just a normal... Uh, using a healing brush to, to fix skin. If we do that, what we're going to get is skin that looks like this. And you can see that all of a sudden all those blemishes just disappeared. But we can still see the pores in our skin here. And that's going to be something that I like. I like to see those pores. And I can even add something called a high pass filter where we sort of over sharpen this. And so when it prints, it looks sort of nice. So here's our original. And then here is our uh, totally finished uh, high pass filter skin retouch where we can see all the pores and everything. Now, that's a retouching that I like. A lot of people don't like that. They don't want to see all these pores here. They don't like to see the fine hairs on our, our model's face and the lines in the face. And so some photographers use something that is a, a blur and noise filter. It's a two-step filter and I'll show you how to do that. And it looks sort of like this. I call it glamour skin. Now I've really overdone it in this demo so you can see how this looks and at full resolution it doesn't look so good but when you back out a little bit you can see it doesn't look so bad. So it sort of hides all of those uh, blemishes and everything but you still have to do the retouching underneath that so you still have to get rid of uh, some of these blemishes using the healing brush tool. So either way, you're going to have to know how to use a healing brush tool on skin. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to go right back to my original. And I'm using layer comps here. If you're wondering, it's a way to turn on and off layers quickly. And so I set that up in advance. I'm going to close this. I'm going to actually open up my layers. And I have all these layers here that I've already prepared uh, just to save us some time here to show you what we're doing. But I really need to get this back to our original state so I can show you how to walk through all of these things. So let's do this. What I'll do here is I'll take these different uh, layers that I've created and I'm going to just delete them and get rid of them. So what we have now is we have just our, our image right out of camera, the way it came out in camera raw. I did some adjustments to the color, but that's about it. Now what I would need to do here is I don't want to start editing right on the background layer. If I do, I can't undo that 
later on. I need to be doing some something called non-destructive editing. So what I'll do is right away, I'm going to drag the background and create a copy of that layer. And I'm going to rename that. I'm going to call it skin. I'm calling it skin because I'm specifically retouching the skin. And so that's why I call that skin. Then I can turn off the background layer. And then if I mess something up, I can always come back here to the background layer and pull it in. I can copy and paste or just make a new copy and make a new layer. I've got all kinds of options there. So what we want to do here is I want to show you the different ways to use the healing brush tool on skin. Now on the upper left hand side here, we have our healing brush tool. We have several different versions. We have the spot healing brush. We have the normal healing brush. We have the patch tool and we have the red eye tool. We're not going to use the red eye tool or the patch tool. We're just going to be going back and forth between the spot healing brush and the healing brush. So what's the difference between these two? Well, the healing brush tool, if I select that, what I'll have to do is I'll have to choose a source. So what I'll do is I'll choose a really bad source so you can really see this. So I'm hitting the option or alt key and I am choosing the source of my healing. And then I'm going to go down on her cheek. And then as I'm painting on, it's choosing to pull the texture of this area and put it on top of the, the colors and luminosity of this area. And so I'm saying I want to pull from here and apply it to here. Now this is not like the cloning tool because notice that we kept the tonality and the color of her cheek. We just pulled the texture down. So of course we don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo that. The other brush here, the uh, spot healing brush, does something a little bit differently. What it does is it chooses the surrounding areas to decide how to heal that skin. And so if I just make a mark on here, you can see that it just pulls from the surrounding areas and it does a really good job. Sometimes it doesn't. If you have some areas around that aren't so good, you can see here how I can sort of get rid of her uh, eyelashes there and give her a bruised eye. We don't want that. But you can see how that's really, really quick. So what I'll do here is I'm going to get rid of that. There we go. And uh, I have those two options now. Now the other thing that's really important to notice in the spot healing brush at the very top here, we have this bar where we have some options. We have proximity match, create texture, and content aware. Now I'll be going between content aware and proximity match. Content aware is great when you have something like a hair that has an abrupt edge that you want to uh, get out of an image. Sort of like right here, we have a hair that's over her eyebrow. And I want to make sure that I get rid of that. And so what I'll do is I'll get a really small brush here. And then I can sort of paint over that. And my healing brush is aware uh, that I have this boundary here and it's going to do a great job of removing that hair. So that's what Content Aware allows you to do. Proximity Match, what it does is it pulls uh, uh, areas around your brush to match what you're healing. So that's great for things like skin and pores. Because for example, if I want to go in here and heal this right here, I'm just painting that on, it's going to pull from the surrounding areas to choose to fill in this. And so it does a really good job. And if I just sort of go through here and quickly paint using my Wacom tablet, you can see that I'm already starting to get rid of some of those blemishes. And I can turn that layer on and off. And you can see that really quickly, I was able to make that stuff disappear. It's great for going in and retouching things like this little blemish right here, up here, right there. And so I can really start going to town using proximity match and getting some great results. Now I will have some problems when I get to something like this. So right here I have a blemish. And I'll just paint that out really fast. It doesn't look too bad at this area. But one of the things that I want to do is make sure that I get this texture um, and don't uh, have finer pores where I have a little bit larger pores. So I'm going to back this up so I have that blemish there again. And to make sure that I have the exact thing that I want there, what I'll do is I'll go over to the healing brush tool, choose a source that's really close, and then brush that out. And you can see that I'm really able to get rid of that blemish and keep the texture of her skin and everything looks really great. So using those two brushes, the spot healing tool with proximity match most of the time and the normal healing brush tool for things that are a little bit more difficult. For example, this area here, notice it's on an area that has a little bit of darkness and a little bit of light. I need to make sure I choose the dark area and then I'll go ahead and paint that. I'll choose another area, go ahead and paint that. You can see that really quickly 
I am uh, retouching her skin and making it look really great. I'll go back over here to my spot healing brush and just like that I will just really rapidly go through and paint some things and get these blemishes out of here. And by doing that eventually if I stick with it in about five or ten minutes I will have my entire skin retouched and you can see as we were uh, talking here I didn't really do much doesn't seem like I did much but check this out I can go into my layers and I will hide that history panel and notice how I turn on and on that skin layer look how much has changed in just the short amount of time that I've been talking so if I spend some time here I could really tune this in make sure all this texture right here was done correctly and I had a beautiful looking uh, skin which I think right now we're really really close now once you do that with your healing brush tool and you can really go in and be really specific with how you're doing that getting eyelashes and things like that once you're done with that now you have the foundation for doing even more work now what I like to do is not much more than that I like to see my skin I like to see the textures on the face and I will even a lot of times do one step more which is called adding a high pass filter let me show you that it's like sharpening but what it does is it really sculpts the face so what I'll do is I'll take my skin layer I'm going to copy that and I'm going to rename that high pass just so I know what the heck that is later when I open this up and what I will do here is I'm going to go into my filter go to other and then choose high pass when I choose that what I'm doing here is I have this new layer and it just looks like a gray layer and if I increase the radius you can see that oh that looks really horrible if I decrease that you can see that I really have sort of the outline of Carissa's face here I really don't want to overdo this so I just want to have some of the highlights of the lines I am going to do it, overdo it a little bit so you can really see what's going on here but I I recommend that you just really use a light hand when you're doing a high pass filter but I'm going to leave it at about 1.3 pixels so on the video you can really see what's happening I'll hit OK and now it just looks like I have a gray image what I need to do is go to my layers and then choose the overlay mode on that high pass filter and what that does if I turn it off you can see that that really makes that much sharper and that is the way I like to sharpen images it really makes it look great so let's take a look before here's our image after with image retouching so there's one way there's another way that I need to show you and that is to actually use something called the blur and noise uh, filter now that's not a filter that's called blur and noise or two different filters that you put together so what I'll do is I'm going to turn off my high pass filter we're going to use that skin layer that I created with the retouching on her skin as the foundation and so the first thing that I'm going to do is make a copy of that and I'm going to rename that and I'm going to call it blur so I've called that blur then what I'll do is I'm going to go to my filters choose blur and then Gaussian blur now when I choose that what it's going to do is it's actually going to blur the entire layer now I'm really overdoing this so you can see what's happening here so I wouldn't normally use a radius of three and a half or four pixels but I really want you to be able to see this on the video so please don't write to me and say hey you did it way way too much I know I'm doing it too much I want to do it so you can actually see what's happening so this is at a four pixel radius normally I'd use something maybe one and a half or two pixels it really depends on the image itself but we'll stick with four right now I'll say OK now I have this blurry uh, layer who wants that well a lot of people do because you can do some amazing things with that the next thing I want to do though before I do anything else with this blur layer I'm going to go up here to layer choose new layer and then choose layer right there now you can't do this from the layers palette you have to do it from the menu so choose new so choose layer new and then layer and when you choose the new layer you have to choose some things here so I'm going to name this layer noise I'm going to call it noise and when I did that I just made a mistake because I <laughs> didn't choose my option so let's try again layer new layer and then this time I won't hit enter so I hit noise I'm renaming this noise now I need to go down here to mode and make sure I choose overlay it's very important 
And then underneath overlay mode, I need to click this button, this little box right here that says fill with overlay neutral color, 50% gray. That's something that you can't do from the layers palette. So you just choose layer, new layer, name it noise, or whatever you want to name it. Make sure it's in overlay mode. And then make sure you choose fill overlay neutral color. And then I'll hit OK. Now notice we have a new layer, but it doesn't look like it's doing anything because it's not. It's just sort of this transparent layer that's hovering over our other layers. So what I'll do here is I'm going to add some noise to this layer. So I'm going to choose filter noise add noise so I'll click that and then in this noise layer now you can start to see that this layer is actually doing something so I'm going to choose to add some noise I'm going to use a Gaussian uh, distribution I'm going to make sure that's monochromatic now it's important to keep it monochromatic because if you uncheck that what it looks like you've got lots of reds and blues it just looks like camera noise which is no good we want it to look like film grain so I'm going to choose monochromatic. Again, I've way overdone this. So normally I wouldn't use a 28% or 11%, but I'm going to go ahead and choose, I'm going to just make it an even 12% um, amount of noise. Normally I would do something much, much less than this. But I'm going to stick with that. I will say OK. And now what I'll do is I'm going to take my blur layer and my noise layer, and I'm going to combine those two. So I'm going to say merge layers. So now I've got this new layer here that is blur and noise. It's got both of them. You can see that everything goes from nice and sharp to nice and blurred with noise. So what we want to do is we don't want everything to be blurred like that. We want to have nice clean eyes. We want to have lips that we can see. So what I'll do is add a mask. And then what I normally do is in that mask, I go ahead and fill the mask with black. And so it hides everything. And then I'll go ahead and get a normal brush. I'll make sure that brush has a really nice soft edge. And then I'll have a really nice large brush, even larger than that, maybe 400 pixels, 300 pixels around there. And then what I can do is now I can paint on that effect. And notice what's happening is when you paint this on, it's getting rid of all the texture in the skin. It's getting rid of all those small hairs. It's getting rid of all the freckles. It's just really... Uh, taking a spatula and taking out all the the texture, all the different things that some people don't like in skin. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I want to see lines. I want to see pores. I want to see freckles. Some people don't. So I'll just keep uh, brushing this out. Now, you don't want to brush this onto the lips or the eyes. You just want to have this on the skin itself. So I'll go ahead and finish this out really really quickly and of course normally I would take much more time when I'm doing this and make sure that it's perfect but you can see that now we've got this sort of soft noisy skin here and all of the different lines in Carissa's face have gone away and of course what we would have to do is spend quite a bit more time to make sure all the different details around her eyebrows and her hair are done correctly but you get the idea if you spent some time on this you could get something that looks great. And that is how you do the noise and blur skin, what a lot of people just call glamour skin. I don't like it, but a lot of people have asked how to do it, and that's how you do it. So there you have it, two different ways to retouch skin. One way is to just use the healing brush tool to get rid of blemishes, maybe add a high pass filter to get a nice look like this that shows all the details. The second way is to go ahead and build on that retouched skin and instead of a high pass filter, add some noise and add some blur and you get this sort of old school glamoury look that a lot of people like. If you zoom out a little bit, you can see that it doesn't look quite as horrendous as it does when you're really zoomed in. So there you have it, two ways to retouch skin. Well, there are two ways that you can use to retouch skin. Now that's just, I wouldn't even say that's the tip of the iceberg. I'd see that it's like seeing the iceberg in the distance. There are a lot more to learn about retouching. Now, what I recommend is that you check this book out. It's called Skin by Lee Veris, and it is just a wealth of information about getting things correct in the camera, color calibration, and then all the Photoshop retouching that you need to know it comes with the DVD. It's, it's an amazing resource, and I've used this book so much that the insides of mine are actually falling out 
because uh, it's a phenomenal resource. So if you really want to deep dive into retouching, this is the place to go. Get this book by Lee Veris. It is a winner. Well, thank you so much for joining me this week. Remember, if you have a question about photography, you can send it to me at askmark at adorama.com. I hope you'll do that, and I hope to see you again next time. like cars and trucks and buses and planes. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.